bonjour, and welcome back to Famous Interviews. Oh, or should I say, welcome and a bon retour of Famous Interviews. As today, I'm planning on speaking with a spectre fluent in the French and German tongues. Quite the canny linguist. I myself have no genius for German. My lexicon is limited to Fräulein, Mein Herr, Strudel. Is Edelweiss a word, I wonder? It was in the sound of music, but who knows, maybe they made it up. Theatre people are well known for taking loads and loads of liberties. What's that, Egbert? It's a flower. Leon Topodium Nine Valley. Well, heavens, there's a mouthful. An alpine flower. Well, aren't you the happy whore dick culturist? Today, instead of relying on recently departed prominent personalities, I thought it would be jolly good fun to have a crack at contacting an historical figure, a lady, not my kind of lady, a queen, a real queen. Well, I suppose some might consider me a real queen, this chat show my realm, you my loyal subjects, and alas, poor Egbert, my Yorick. So, today's Queen du Jour, if I can pull her off, shall be instantly recognisable. Originally Austrian, she was finally French. And I do mean finally. Ah, little seat, get off me feet. Always a lovely thing. All right, now, this week, instead of my usual coif, I shall be enjoying this lovely Irish gin given me by my very, very close and personal friend, Graham Norton. Though he pretends he doesn't know who I am. Well, silly Billy. I know it's from him because he delivered it by a lovely little Irish last name, Niamha. Although I think she pronounced it Neve. But really, it was clearly written on the card N I A M H. I do wish the Irish would learn to pronounce the English alphabet. So, gin. It's what the Queen drinks. Cheers. <laughs> That's the mutts nuts. Complete with the curly little hair. Thanks again, Graham. So, Without any additional delay, I shall now attempt to summon the spirit of the notorious Queen of all France, Marie Antoinette. Yes, very exciting, she says. Give me a chance to practice my Frances. Perhaps an autre sip of me poisson. No, boisson, boisson, pardonnez-moi. Hope I don't unintentionally slip her the fish. <laughs> All right, let us begin. A candle for you, or should I say two? No, with royals it's you. One must be polite when addressing a queen or unaddressing a queen. All right. My dearest Marie, I bring you gifts from life to death, though not a diamond necklace. That affair, all eyes threadbare, led to your turning necklace. Commune with us, Marie Antoinette, commune with us, move amongst us, move amongst us. And for heaven's sakes, chivy along, coming through should be a piece of cake. <gasps> The price of wheat was too high, and bread became very cher. But I never said that. Never said what, dear? Let them eat cake. But you just did. Oh, oh, I see. No, no, darling, I meant coming through should be a piece of cake. Like easy as pie. It's an idiom. Well. Goodness, where's the rest of you? I only got what went to the basket. Perhaps an additional incantation is required. 
Body of Marie, commune with us. Body of Marie, be reunited. Reunited, it will feel so good. <gasps> How lovely, jubbly, you're all here. Well, have a seat. Yes, there you go. What are you staring at, dear? Your makeup. Oh, do you like it? I'm all a blush. Seems a great deal more. I didn't mean all blush. It takes hours, you know. I am my court abandoned in the use of heavy well, makeup. In my court, it's a must, darling. Seems rather old fashioned uh, to my sensibilities. Whose sensibilities are old-fashioned now, hmm? Good taste is never out of fashion. Toujours à la vogue. Too bad you couldn't convince the revolutionary tribunal of yours. You were, after all, accused of many tasteless successes, n'est-ce pas? All fabrication. Even that juicy part about sexually abusing your son I myself have a son I'm quite fondled, <laughs> fond, 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 quite fond of. The masses were spoon-fed wild and degenerate lies about me. What today you would call Trump charges. I think you mean trumped-up charges. Trump charges are often lies or easily dismissed, at least by Fox News. But back to you, dear. They accused you of taking your own son to bed. Teaching him to, how to put it, polish the bedpost, burp the worm, charm the cobra, so to speak. Reminds me of many night with me ex. But it can't be true, can it? Is it? Was it? The truth seems far less important than what you can get people to believe. Not Trump again. Oh, or are you quoting someone else? Perhaps Steve Bannon, Roy Cohn? I quote the radical slanderer Jacques Hébert. My tribunal was hungry for many demonizing deceit. And Monsieur Hébert kept them well fed. Well, bloody awful that. And you were so young. In my time, 37 was not considered so young. Well, it's true that life expectancy has increased since the 1700s. <laughs> Thank God for that. Threefold. Perhaps more. Speaking of oldies, is it true you met Mozart? Oui. He came to our palace in Vienna when I was a child of seven. He was two months younger, but already quite the prodigy. Hmm. Indeed. Did he play with you? For you? For, for you? Yes, sir. He gave a royal performance. Hmm, yes, he's known for those. For you at home who don't know, Marie Antoinette's father was Holy Roman Emperor Francis I and mother Empress Maria Theresa. So, Your Majesty, were you yourself musically inclined? So it was said. I strummed the harp and tooted the fluted. I've heard rumors. I've had a tutor or two on the old blow stick myself. Well, you purportedly sang beautifully as well and loved the dance. Is that true? I have always been fond of all the arts. And fashion. Don't forget fashion. I think a queen should look a queen, not a peasant. I had my couture designed especially to enhance my regal bearing. At a royal price, so they say. In fact, didn't they accuse you of being a bit extravagant with the crown's money, starting with that diamond necklace affair? The necklace was Louis XV's gift to the Dubarry Hall, which she never received because he could not afford. I had nothing to do with it. I was a scapegoat for a situation not of my making. And if France could not pay her debts, Surely my modest expenses could hardly be to blame. <coughs> modest. Well, undoubtedly true. 
Governments through the ages have shown a marked propensity to overspend, nest pass. Now, let's talk about Louis, your husband, the 16th, of course. If we must. Hmm. Do I detect un petit hesitation? Allons, ask what you like. Merci, your majesty. It is me chacho, you know, and you see, I am queen. Now about Louis. How is it you two were wed seven years before producing an heir? Problemos in the royal boudoir? If there was a problem, I assure you it was not mine. Ooh, ouch, delicioso. Do go on. I produced four children and an heir. That speaks for itself. I tragically lost my first son, the Dauphin, to the White Plague when he was a mere child. Oh. You know, today we have a simple cure for that. For what? La mort? For death? No, no, darling Majesty, for the White Plague, though we call it tuberculosis. A cure? Perhaps what you've lost in style, you've gained in science. What we lost in... Now look here. I know you were Queen of France and all that, but in this court I rule. So if you don't put a lid on your snark, I just might very well send you back from whence you came. Do you threaten me? If I do, there's little you can do about it, is there? Do not underestimate me. Phantasms are not completely without powers. Ooh. Heavens, Egbert, turn down the AC. It's suddenly freezing in here. I see his insults. It's you making it so cold? Well, Stop it! Please! I could freeze to, to death! <laughs> My dear, you must forgive any offence I may have unknowingly incurred. I didn't mean to turn our little parlez-vous into a cold war. <laughs> Won't you please release me from your spell, your, 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 your most warm-hearted, gracious Royal Highness? Admit you like style and sophistication. On a cold day in Havre. <laughs> I mean, of course, Sherry. Of course. Anything to oblige your whimsy dimsy. If I only had a teensy tad of your Titanic taste. Goodness. Jack Frost has nothing on you. Perhaps a little sip to rekindle me in a flame. Oh, damn. Oops. And so much better, that. Now, your high and mightiness, where were we? You just cured the white plague. But let us move along. Some things are too hard to remember. Indeed. There are some hard things in my past as well. Raymond, what hard things could you possibly have in your past? <sighs> Man things. Votre mari? No, we never did marry, but that's another saga. Most of that man I'd rather not remember. The one thing is hard to forget. La la. Ooh la 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were known to have had a few gifted lovers yourself, n'est-ce pas? I had many admirers, c'est vrai. Louis was busy with counsellors, while I was busy with affairs of state. Like Axel von Fersen? Do you need another cooling off? No, darling, I, I'm, I'm, I'm referring to the affair of the American Revolution. Heavens, wasn't Axel aide de camp in America meeting with George Washington himself? Certainly. We supported any weakening of the British realm. To this end, 
I help secure the support of Austria and Russia. And it was my pleasure to entertain Count von Fersen when he returned to France. Count on a queen for entertainment. We? Come, come, darling, it's just us girls. Spill the tea, as they said in Boston. Knew he had little time for me, and he was far from amorous. I was a queen, but also a woman. With a woman's needs, did I not require love as any other woman? As Archduchess of Austria and Queen of France, I should have found her more a plenty, more a more than I had room for. Me no. I was used. Father only trotted me out to sing at parties. Alone did he ever once put his arm around me and say, Schatzi, ich liebe dies? No. And Mama, whom I adored, used me as well, marrying me to Louis to create a political alliance to her advantage, not mine. Do you know, neither Louis nor I attended our own wedding. How is that possible? We were married in proxy. We. Oui. We later had a second ceremony in person, but we were already wed. How unfeeling of Louis and your father. <laughs> a wedding is not a business transaction. But it was. The men in my life showed little interest in my needs, so why shouldn't I have indulged myself when an admirer or two, ou plus, or delighted in haute couture, or thrilled to recondition a chateau. I found ways to please myself, to find a little joie in an otherwise confining and loveless existence. And yes, I indeed had an affair with Count Axel Fersen. And he too was hard to forget. Anything else you would care to discuss? Or did you disturb my eternal peace only to gossip? I'm no flibberty gibbet. I would never say that. I don't even know what that means. It means a busybody. Scandal monger. Scandal monger, nosy eavesdropper, flibberty chippity boo. I think it's a song from Cinderella. I know of Saint Leon, but not the song. It was in the cartoon version. Walt Disney. You know, animated pictures. Never mind. Anyway, you're right about that love thing. I think we all need it. I know I do. Sorely. But I'm afraid my love life is like a desert without cacti. Dried up and prickless. Well, at least I have me sweet son Cecil. Ah, oh, les enfants. They were everything to me. Sadly, only my daughter, Marie Theresa, survived to adulthood. Uh, liberté, égalité, fraternité, connerie. Did she have any children of her own, your daughter? No. Sadly, she too found a loveless mari. Hmm. Quel fromage! Pardon? Well, it's, it's, it's just so sad, isn't it? More tragically, it seems we're running out of time. Time for moi is eternal, madame. Perhaps for you, dear, but not for me, producer Igbert, who's frantically flagging me to wrap it up. Chop, chop. No, 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 dear heavens. It's, it's pigeon English for hurry up. I have never understood you English birds. Allons, je vais partir. Au revoir, Madame Marie. Stay warm until we meet again. Talk about a tete a tete. Well, there it is, Marie Antoinette. Perhaps now we have a petite more insight into why she was loathed by the masses. Maybe she cast her frigid spell on them as well. But the frozen finger of fate fickled her in the end. 
Imagine how icy cold her lonely ride to the guillotine must have been. Well, one must feel sorry for her. Thirty-seven years of non-stop royal riches, personal privilege, and amorous affairs can really wear a woman down, so they say. Somehow I've managed to wear down without any of those bits. Viva la revolution. Well, I do hope you've enjoyed our historical detour du jour, and we'll join you again next week for who knows who. Until then, don't forget to like this episode, follow me channel, and keep yourselves safe. I am Lady Mariposa, and this has been Famous Interviewers.